this edition of the Red and Blue Political Roundup, President Trump is going after Attorney General Jeff Sessions again. In an interview with Fox News, Mr. Trump accused Sessions of never taking control of the Justice Department and renewed his frustrations with the Attorney General's decision to recuse himself from the Russia investigation. Sessions disputed the president's claims in a statement saying, quote, I took control of the Department of Justice the day I was sworn in. And, quote, while I am attorney general, the actions of the Department of Justice will not be improperly influenced by political considerations. I demand the highest standards. The two had a meeting at the White House Thursday, but the president's criticisms and the attorney general's response were reportedly not discussed. According to a CBS News producer, the meeting on sentencing reform was said to have gone well. Molly Hooper is a CBSN political contributor and congressional reporter for The Hill. She joins me now from Washington. Hi, Molly. Are you Hello. surprised that the topic of Sessions' statement or his potential <laughs> firing was not brought up at all during his meeting with the president today? I don't know. You know, I mean, the president threatens to fire him all the time. It's just, you know, he's, he's caught in the middle of something right now. No, <laughs> no <laughs> yeah, different. You, no, yeah, you know, it is, it's, a, it's a normal day. Um, and then they have a meeting about sentencing reform, after which Jeff Session comes out and says, well, we're not going to be, we're not going to go easy on sentences, essentially is what he thinks that the Senate wants to do. And Chuck Grassley, the man who's, who's moving for lighter sentences and, and sentence reform, says, hey, it's great. Um, we're going to deal with this after the midterms. So, you know, it's unclear what is going on right now. It's just that, it's just that Jeff Sessions, if something if he were to be fired um, at this point, there wouldn't be a lot of support in the Senate from Senate Republicans, and, and it would be very difficult to put somebody else in that position before the midterms and perhaps even after the midterms. Right. And, and I agree with you. You know, the president is sort of threatening to fire him all the time. <laughs> There's something that feels a little bit different about t yeah. the recent exchange, though. Senator Lindsey Graham cautioned the president about firing Attorney General Sessions before the midterm elections, but said he thinks there will be a new face at the Justice Department sooner rather than later. That's a real reversal on statements he had previously made about firing Sessions. So what's the explanation for that, do you think? Well, I think that I think that there's some underlying stuff going on right now between the Republicans up on Capitol Hill and the White House and the Department of Justice. I just mentioned sentencing reform. That's a big deal on the House and the Senate side, bipartisan measure that Democrats and Republicans, a majority of them, want to pass and get to the president's desk. Jeff Sessions, on the other hand, is really pushing back against those measures. He doesn't think that the sentences need to be reformed, and he doesn't want prison reforms. Um, you, you know, he, he, he believes in harsh punishment for, you know, uh, offenders. Well, that's at odds with what Chairman J Chuck Grassley wants up on the Senate side. He does want that sentencing reform. So you have that dynamic going on right, right now. You also have the issue of Jeff Sessions being tough on immigration reform. I mean, he's he's the one who is behind the zero tolerance policy that some Republicans up on Capitol Hill, like Lindsey Graham, don't particularly appreciate and are not a, fa a fan of, so to speak. So so there's some underlying currents going on. But but the point is that if the president were to fire Sessions today. I say it would only take one Republican to essentially vote no on the next person to be appointed as as the attorney general to essentially stop that process in its tracks. And earlier today, Republican Ben Sass from Nebraska, a critic of the president's, basically said, "There's no way I would support something like that. Right. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't. You know, to fire pres uh, to fire t Attorney General um, Jeff Sessions for not being a quote flack and not being there, you know, for political purposes." That that just doesn't fly with me. And John Cornyn, the whip, the number two ranking Republican on the Senate side, said that he can't see, you know, getting a nominee through the Senate at this point. Now, Molly, in an interview, President Trump said the markets would crash if he were impeached. And his mm -hmm. lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, predicted there would be a, quote, revolt if that happened. Is the White House trying to send a message to Congress or is it just amazing that the president is even discussing the possibility of impeachment?
Actually, I think that this is one of the, this is one of the points that the Republicans and Donald Trump want to you know to really gin up before the midterm elections because they need their base to get out to vote and they want to keep the republic the, they want to keep the House and the Senate in Republican hands and there's some fear that there may be Republican apathy. Um, you know, the president's party doesn't tend to do very well. You know, the first term after after his you know the mid midterm election after he was first elected, and so you know this this is kind of a way to get to shake up their base, shake up Republicans who who do approve of the president's policy when it comes to the economy and other matters, um, and make sure that they get out to the to vote. Um, and also, you know, it signals concern on the part, I think, of President Trump, um, you know, because you're not, you are hearing Republicans up on Capitol Hill, uh, you know, warning the president against, say, pardoning Paul Manafort or right. pardoning Michael Cohen. But when it comes to impeachment, they're not necessarily, you know, shooting that down because, you know, still we have to see Bob Mueller's report. And the one thing that I did hear from Republicans is that Bob Mueller's investigation is not a witch hunt, like the president has said. And so I think that the jury's out, so to speak. Um, right. <laughs> or, or the House will be the jury um, once Robert Mueller comes out with his report. Now, now, Molly, sources tell CBS News that Republican donors are divided over the president's legal problems. Are Republicans concerned then that this ongoing legal drama could really hurt them in the midterms? Absolutely. And what happened on Tuesday was, was not good for the Republican Party because they want to go out and they want to tout the accomplishments of the administration. They want to tout the tax reform policy. They want to tout all these these things that they believe that they've done. You know, the end regulations that are that are helping businesses. That's what they want to be running on, and they don't want to have to to deal with questions from the media, and and you know, tweets by the president and and talk of possible firings of an attorney general. Um, you know, that ostensibly will take suck up all the air in in the room. You know, and, and right. that's something that the media is focusing on every time we have um, an indictment, a conviction, or a guilty plea. I mean, this is something that the media is going to focus on. And when the president comes out and he tweets about it, that just adds fuel to the fire. And Republicans right. don't like that. Do you think Democrats are really going to seize on this as an issue going forward? We've already heard top Democrats use the phrase culture of corruption to talk <laughs> about the administration and the Repub Republican Party. Do you think this is going to be something that they were really going to focus on? Oh, absolutely. Again, absolutely. They, they already have. You've t I've talked to several Democrats on the Senate side. You know, of course, they're in town this August, um, you know, <laughs> staying in you know, town, doing their business. But uh, they've already called this this situation, you know, made comparisons to Watergate and and have, have said things like, you know, if, if there are any pardonings of Paul Manafort, then, you know, basically it would just, you know, blow up the process on Capitol Hill and the House and the Senate would come to and, you know, they would come to a standstill, there would be walkouts and whatnot. So they are seizing on this. And again, with the actual conviction of President Trump's former campaign manager on, on charges unrelated to the Russia collusion, uh, you know, inquiry, it, 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 but still a conviction. Right. That That's something that Democrats are seizing on. And Michael Cohen's guilty plea, again, is something that they, they are moving forward with. Absolutely. Uh, Molly Hooper, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you.